Hollywood, California, we bring you a new prize Dr. Christian play starring Gene Herschel and presented for your pleasure by the Cheese Bro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other Vaseline specialties. Here's a way to help you make sure that you're spending your money in the wisest way. Before you part with a dollar bill, take a good look at the picture on the front, the picture of George Washington. And then ask yourself if you're spending the dollar in a way that Washington would think right. Now, if you look George in the eye, it's a good bet you'll end up buying war stamps. And remember, you can buy a lot more war bonds and stamps than you think if you find new ways to economize. Here's one way to save several dollars. Just make more use of your medicine cabinet jar of Vaseline jelly. The angle is, Vaseline jelly costs only 10 cents, but it actually does the work of half a dozen different products that may cost several times as much. Find out what an excellent dressing Vaseline jelly is for everyday burns and scalds, little cuts and abrasions. Learn how it soothes babies' chafed, irritated skin. Discover how healing Vaseline jelly is for sore, cracked, work-worn hands. For these and hundreds of other uses, Vaseline jelly is the handiest thing in the house. Have it nearby when you need it and where you need it. Aside from your medicine cabinet jar, keep one in your first aid kit, ready to apply promptly when everyday emergencies arrive. Get a 10-cent jar of Vaseline jelly tonight. See how much money it saves you. Tonight's prize-winning play is the work of Alma Bradley of Gorman, Texas. Mrs. Bradley's history is typical of ambitious young America. Seven years ago, when she was 20 and living in Washington, D.C., she took to writing as a cure for loneliness, while her young husband studied far into the night for the examinations for certified public accountants. They decided to move to Texas, where they could live more cheaply than in Washington. The young husband continued his studies at night, Disappointed, but not defeated by failure to pass his examination. The young wife found herself immersed in motherhood. They have two lovely daughters now, and making ends meet became even more of a problem. The last examination came in November 1941, she writes. War was declared in December, and then we found there was to be another baby, and I was plunged into the depths of despair. It was just about this time the Dr. Christian Award was announced, and the first evening, I wrote the play, It's the Little Thing, which was one of four submitted to you. After that play, I felt a spiritual uplift, and I kept on writing plays until there were eight. I hadn't a typewriter, but arranged to hold out on the grocery budget so that I could rent one for a week. I lined the plays up according to their quality, I thought, and started typing them. By the time the week was up, I had the four plays ready, the fourth one you have purchased. Your letter and the check for my script, An Artist Comes to Town, have brought far greater happiness than I can put into words. I'm using part of the money to buy a typewriter, and you can bet I shall never stop trying to write now. Well, more power to you, Alma Bradley. The pictures you sent of your little family are lovely. We're glad to note that your husband is a full-fledged CPA and well-situated. And we hope you'll like our production of your play, An Artist Comes to Town. Besides Dr. Christian, played by Gene Herschel, and Judy Price, played by Lurene Tuttle, the play has for a central character, Miss Sylvia St. Vincent, famous portrait painter, played by Margaret Brayton, a hotel manager, played by Clarence Strait, and a switchboard operator, played by Janet Waldo. The opening scene takes place in Dr. Christian's office, and so the curtain rises. Dr. Christian's office. Dr. Christian. Yes, he is. This is the United States Hotel calling. I have an urgent call for Dr. Christian. What is it? I don't know. The manager said it was Miss Sylvia St. Vincent. They brought her here in an ambulance from the train. I was instructed to get the best doctor in town. Oh. What is it, Judy? It's Sylvia St. Vincent. Uh, tell Dr. Christian to come at once. It's a matter of life and death. Oh, yes, he, he, he'll be right over. You mean Sylvia St. Vincent, the celebrated portrait painter? Uh -huh. She's at the United States Hotel. They brought her from the train in an ambulance, and they want you right away. 
The operator said it was a matter of life and death. Did she say whether Miss Benson was ill or had been injured? No, she didn't know. She said she'd been instructed to get the best doctor in town immediately. Well, I wonder why they didn't take Miss Benson to the hospital. Well, we'll soon find out. You want me to come along? Oh, certainly. We must go prepare for anything. Uh, better get my bag. All right. Uh, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait. Let me turn this doctor is in sign around. Now, let's go. I'm Dr. Christian. There's a call for me. Yes, uh, Miss Sylvia St. Vincent. She's in room 410. Thank you. Oh, here's the elevator. Fourth floor, please. Go ahead, Judy. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. 408. 409. 410, here it is. Miss St. Vincent? Oh, yes. Are you the doctor? Oh, do come right in. Oh, my poor Fifi is dying. I'm sure of it. Now, now, calm oh. yourself, Miss St. Vincent. Uh, uh, where's the patient? Oh, here. Here in the bedroom. Come in. Oh, Fifi, my poor little Fifi. Oh, the doctor's here now. You're going to be all right. Oh, doesn't she look sweet in her little basket? A dog. Oh. oh, doctor, can you save her? Oh, you've got to. This is her first time for this sort of thing. Oh, poor, poor Fifi. Mama just knows what you're going through. This nice man's going to help her, though. Oh, doctor, look at her eyes. They're so filled with pain. Oh, don't cry, Fifi, darling. Mama is right here by you. Miss St. Vincent, uh, I'm afraid there's been some mistake. Well, this is a case for a veterinarian. Oh, my darling, Fifi. Oh, no. She's so sensitive, so, so nervous. She took sick on the train and I wired ahead for an ambulance. You see, we're on our way to New York where I'm having a showing. Oh, I didn't dream that Fifi's time was so near. Oh, it, it would happen in a small town like this. Oh, oh, Doctor, do something. Do something. She's dying. Oh, if she dies, I'll just die, too. Judy, my rubber gloves. Yes, Dr. Christian. Now, you go in the other room, Miss and Vincent. I'll call you when it's all over. Oh, no. No, I, I must stay right here by Fifi. I... Oh, baby. Oh, my poor, poor baby. Oh, Doctor. Doctor, look. Look what's happening. Oh. Uh, catch her, Judy. Oh, she fainted. Good. Uh, I'll carry her into the other room. Here, let me help you. No, 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 that's all right. I can manage. Well, I'll lay her right here on this couch. Uh, place her feet, Judy. Is that all right? Yes. Uh, oh, just a minute. There. Here's a glass of water. Thank you. Well, she's coming along. Oh, 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 what happened? You are all right, Miss St. Vincent. Lie quietly. Fifi. Fifi. Oh, what are you doing in here with me when, when poor Fifi needs you? You must be quiet, Miss St. Vincent. Your dog is all right. Oh, she isn't. Oh, you're letting her die. Oh, why did I have to stop in a in a burg like this? I... Uh, Judy, hand me my bag, please. Oh, here it is. Oh. A hassle? Uh-huh. Well, let's see. Oh. Now, Miss St. Vincent, I want to inject this in your arm. Oh, no. No. I'm going to my poor Fifi. I'm coming, Fifi. Mama's coming. Miss St. Vincent. Oh, let me go. Oh, Doctor. Doctor, look up. Oh. Catch her, Dr. Christian. I have a... <clears throat> well, <laughs> here we go again. Yes. <clears throat> let's get her back on the couch. There. Raise your feet, Judy. <laughs> I'll make this injection now. There. Once she comes to, you keep her here on the couch. The hypo will probably put her to sleep. I'll see how Mother Nature is making out in there. Oh. Oh, here I am, I. 
It's all right now. Everything's all right. Oh. Close your eyes. Oh. That's it. Now, close your eyes. Oh, my poor Fifi. <laughs> my poor Fifi. <laughs> oh, now, everything's all right. Oh, I'm so sleepy. So please. Right, I'm just going to take it. Still asleep, Dr. Christian. How's everything in here? No, it's all over, Judy. How many are there? One, two, <laughs> only two. Oh, aren't they cute? So helplessly tiny. Oh, look, she's licking them. <laughs> this is one for the medical journal, isn't it? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to add two pygonies to my long list of babies. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention the case in the other room. I've seen lots of worried fathers, but they were nothing compared to this. It was pretty bad, Judy. Well, now what are we going to do? Wait here until she sleeps at all? Better go ahead and wake her up. I have some patients to see this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> She's a rather pretty little thing. Shall I pull her nose? Yes, but uh, do it as gently as possible. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vincent, wake up. Wake up, Mr. Vincent. What? Oh. oh, I must have been asleep. What's what happened? Dr. Christian and I are almost ready to leave now. Dr. Christian? Oh! Oh, yes. How's my Fifi? She's a proud mother of two babies. <gasps> really? Oh, let me see them. Wait just a minute. I'll help oh. you, Miss St. Vincent. Oh, you feel a little weak. Yes, you'll feel all right in a few minutes. Oh, oh, aren't they cute? <laughs> oh, Fifi, darling. Does you like her new baby? Oh, oh, oh I, I wouldn't try to pet her now, Miss St. Vincent. New mothers do peculiar things when something nears the offspring. I suggest you go in the other room for a while and let her sleep. Uh, Mom is going in the other room now, Fifi. You rest, darling. <laughs> Isn't she a brave little thing? Oh, Dr. Christian, I shall never be able to repay you for what you've done. It meant everything to me. Oh, isn't there something I can do for you? Oh, I'm glad everything turned out so well. You can proceed on to your exhibit now. But I insist on doing something for you. Let me do your portrait. Oh, no, thank you, Miss St. Vincent. Nothing like that. Oh, but you must. Why, well, think what it would mean to have a St. Vincent to hand down to your grandchildren. Oh, you look simply grand in oil. You have such distinguished features. I must do it for you. Uh, were you planning to be in River Sand a few days? Oh, no. Now that Fifi's all right, I must go right on to New York. I'm having my showing this Saturday. Well, then there wouldn't be time for a portrait. Oh, but I'm going back to the West Coast immediately after the exhibit. I could stop off for a few days then. Oh, you must let me do it, Dr. Christian. Oh, very well, if you insist. And I want to come to your house to do it. If you're relaxed, you'll be a better subject for a St. Vincent portrait. <laughs> Very well. Until then, Miss St. Vincent. Until then, Dr. Christian. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss St. Vincent. <laughs> Here's the elevator. Go in, Judy. <sighs> Thank goodness that's over. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Dr. Christian, I must say you were certainly a good sport. Well, you could have knocked me over with a feather when I saw that dog lying in the basket. Well, it was a bit of a shock. <laughs> Just a little bit sickening. I don't believe I've ever felt more like turning somebody over my knee in my life. Oh, well, she loved the dog, Judy. Well, here's our car. Are you really going to let her do your portrait? Oh, I don't know, Judy. <laughs> I really don't expect Miss St. Vincent to stop in River Sand on her way back. After all, an artist of her accomplishment couldn't be expected to give her time to painting the portrait of a country doctor. Mm. <laughs> she didn't neglect, neglect to call one of the best physicians in the country to deliver her pop. <laughs> well, at first I felt just a bit irritated, but now that it's over, <laughs> it's really amusing to... <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I thought I'd die when I looked at your face. Talk about registering emotions. And then when she started raving. 
This is certainly one for the book. Hello? Dr. Christian's office. Hello. This is Miss Sylvia St. Vincent calling. Dr. Christian in. Just a moment, please. It's Miss St. Vincent. You don't mean it. Mm -hmm. Hello? Oh, Dr. Christian. This is Sylvia St. Vincent. Yes, how are you? Oh, simply grand. I haven't forgotten that I promised to give you a St. Vincent to hand down to your grandchildren. Oh, but Miss St. Vincent, you, <laughs> you don't want to take time for that. Oh, but I do. Mm. Think what it will mean to you. When can you sit for your portrait? Well, uh, it would have to be in the evening. <laughs> You're blushing. Oh, well, that's quite <laughs> all right. Could we start this evening? Well, really, Miss St. Vincent, uh, I don't want a portrait. Not, don't be so modest. Very few people who have this opportunity. Very well. Would you be ready to leave the hotel by eight this evening? Eight, yes, and that will give me time to take Phoebe for an airing after dinner. Suppose Miss Price and I drop by for you then and... We will drive one out to the house. Eight o'clock tonight. See you then. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you going to need me around for moral support? Uh, more or less, Judy. You don't mind coming along, do you? Oh, excuse me. I, I don't mean to jeopardize your evening. Oh, don't be foolish. The one and only is working these nights. And anyway, I wouldn't miss it. Well, let's drive out to Mrs. Miller's for dinner. And then we can get Miss and Vincent and go on out to the house. Well... portrait painter? Ah, uh, it all depends. On whether she's in the mood for you, huh? She must feel awfully indebted to you to stop over in this burg. Remember? Oh, now, Judy, first impressions are often wrong. Oh, look, here's the hotel. Stop here in front and I'll run in and see if she's ready. All right. Be right back. Oh, here you are in the lobby. All ready to go? Mm -hmm. Dr. Christian's waiting out front. Oh, hello. You're Miss Price, aren't you? Mm -hmm. How's Fifi? Oh, doing splendidly. She's upstairs with the maid. The poor dear gets so lonesome alone. Well, let me see. I guess I have everything I'll need. Here, let me carry some of your bundles. Oh, I had such a marvelous weekend in New York. Such appreciative people, you know, my dear. Mm, that's nice. Here's Dr. Christian. Oh. There. Get in, Miss St. Vincent. How do you do, Miss St. Vincent? Oh, how do you do, Dr. Christian? I'm so thrilled to see you again. Oh, I'm so thrilled. All set, Judy? All set. Was your exhibit a success, Miss St. Vincent? Oh, naturally. People simply throng to the gallery. They were utterly enraptured. No, I should think so. An artist of your reputation. Oh, well, I really love my work. I just couldn't put my heart and soul into anything else. Now, that's the way we doctors feel about our profession. <sighs> Isn't this a wonderful evening? Oh, yes. And River's End is such a pretty little town. Huh? Here we are. May I help you out, Miss and Vincent? Oh, what a charming house. <laughs> Fat and white, the way a country doctor's house should be. Oh, I see you have your screens down, Dr. Christian. Yes, Judy, I'm going to have the porch glass in before long. Oh, swell. It'll make the house much warmer this winter. Yeah, let me open the door for you. Go on in, please. May I take your things, Miss St. Vincent? Oh, here's my hat and purse. I'll need my case. Uh, Judy, see that Miss St. Vincent is comfortable in the living room while I have the housekeeper make her some coffee. Oh, no, don't bother, Dr. Christian. I'm simply dying to get to work. Uh, shall we work in the living room? Well, as a matter of fact, Miss St. Vincent, what I want you to do is more important than my portrait. Well, oh, what is it, Dr. Christian? Right this way, Miss St. Vincent. Here's the painting you can do for me. You mean... You, you want that table painted? I do. It was my mother's and means a great deal to me. But, but that's a job for... Uh, an ordinary house painter. It's 
what I want done. If you don't care to do it, it's perfectly all right, Miss St. Vincent. I'll drive you back to the hotel and we'll just forget about it. Well, promise is a promise. I... But I'll only do it on one condition. What's that? That I have complete privacy. Oh, very well. I'll have to have some other paints and brushes. Uh, I have what you need out in the car. I'll go and get them. <laughs> Getting late, Dr. Christian. I wonder how Miss St. Vincent is getting along. No, I'm wondering too, Judy. It's been so miles. Well, the painting is finished. Come and look. Why, Dr. Christian, see what she's done. Why, it's beautiful. It is indeed. <laughs> you like it? Well, it's magnificent. Well, that's something new in furniture decoration. Oh, I love those flowers you painted in the middle of the table. Hey, you've done a wonderful piece of work, Miss St. Vincent. Oh, thank you. And you're certainly a good sport. Well, I had to be, to keep up with you. Yes, Judy, I would say Miss Sylvia has surely turned the table on us. <laughs> And the curtain comes down on another prize-winning Dr. Christian play. Our star, Gene Hirschold, will be here in a moment to greet you and tell you about next week's play. How would you like to live in the year 2000? Oh, it's not so far off as it seems. Babies born this year will only be 58 when the year 2000 arrives. Right now, however, they're still babies. And being such, they're subject to those commonplace baby troubles like chafing and day-to-day -day rash. For these ordinary skin irritations, millions of mothers have learned that there's nothing more soothing than Vaseline jelly. Safe and gentle, Vaseline jelly does three important things. First, it soothes baby's chafed, irritated skin. Second, it forms a protective film that helps keep infection out when the skin is broken. Third, it helps to promote healing. When baby's skin is sore or red, use Vaseline jelly after his daily bath. Work it gently into the folds of the skin and wherever the clothing rubs. You can use it freely and as often as you wish. The trademark Vaseline is your guarantee of absolute purity. Get Vaseline jelly tonight. Only ten cents. And now, here is Gene Herschel. <laughs> Tell us, Mr. Herschel, about next week's play. What's it like? Next week's play is another prize play, which won a place in the Dr. Christian Award. It's written by Mrs. Elizabeth Toy Dancy of Holly Springs, Mississippi. And it's called Unto Glory. And the central character is Aunt Tenny, a colored woman. This is an unusual story, and we urge you all to join us again next Wednesday evening at the same hour. <laughs> Until then, I'll say good night. Ladies, if your hair has suffered from too much sunshine, if it's dull and lifeless, let Vaseline Hair Tonic come to the rescue. Before every shampoo, give yourself a Vaseline Hair Tonic Massage. See how Vaseline Hair Tonic makes the hair soft, lustrous, and easy to arrange becomingly. Get a bottle tonight. Art Gilmore speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.